stamp of uh, 25 inches on the road. They were right. We hope that tonight's public comment is not sidetracked by the debate over whether or not marijuana is a legitimate method of treating chronic and terminal illness, but remains focused on the fact that pot farming is not in compliance with federal law or other criminal country code. Further, it is incompatible with the type of businesses that other criminal residents desire and community resources can support. In an effort to protect vanishing farmland, our community has dedicated resources to farming preservation and over the years vehemently imposed various types of development which threaten the character of this fine community. We oppose pot farming in Upper Creole just as we oppose the industrial warehouse on Brezza Road and just as we would oppose fast food chains, corn shops, a Walmart, or a power plant. Upper Fremont has neither the desire nor the resources to accommodate such businesses. Breakwater has offered nonsensical assurances such as lights will operate only between the hours of dusk and dawn and then only on an intimate basis or not at all. This type of club talk is an early warning sign as to the level of transparency and honesty we can expect from Breakwater. Recognizing they have no meaningful tax benefits in the community, Breakwater has attempted to entice Upper Freehold with promises of jobs, purchases from local businesses, and donations from parks. With no established track record for pot farming in the state of New Jersey, are, these are nothing more than promises in the dark. They could likely operate in the red for years with no funds to spare for parks. They could also be restricted uh, in purchasing agreements to specific vendors for farming products, giving no benefit to local shops. There are no best practices available which outline how to handle security. The fact is there is no business model to follow for pot farming in New Jersey that will ensure successful operation because it's never been done. Therefore, absolutely no promises can or should be made by Breakwater or any other entity regarding economic benefits or security because the fact is that they are as ignorant as we when it comes to predicting how pot farming will actually function and what types of problems it will generate. Thus, Great Water and the state of New Jersey are telling Upper Creole to be the guinea pig for this experiment and hope for the best. We reject this burden. If pot farming is as benign as Great Water would have us believe, then surely there are other municipalities within the vast Southern County region that would be more suitable and welcoming. Instead of pursuing alternate locations, Great Water has chosen to force their way to Upper Creole by, in their words, any means at their disposal. This begs the question, why us? Comparable land prices can be found elsewhere. So, why choose a community which has demonstrated such resolve as evidenced by over 800 signatures on the petition? Perhaps it is because Upper Freehold is not as financially well healed or politically connected as those in other municipalities and is therefore viewed as an easy target with few resources to wage an adequate fight. We hope to prove Great Water wrong. Great Water has publicly threatened to enforce their rights. With due respect to Breakwater, other Freehold residents have worked hard to shape the type of place in which we want to live. Our rights as taxpaying residents to protect our families trumps Breakwater's right to mar our landscapes with ugly fences, risk our safety, decimate our home values, and forever damage the character of our community. We support the Township Committee pursuing any and all options available under the law to block Breakwater Treatment Center from operating within Upper Freehold County. Thanks, Duke. I live at 24 Heritage Drive over here in Upper Creole. And I'm the uh, president of Upper Creole Allentown Baseball Association. When I was sitting here not thinking of speaking, I was wondering what I would talk about. And uh, being president of the league that has over 400 kids, two of my own, I thought the children were what we really need to think about. So personally, I felt if this was something positive, we wouldn't be here. It would be done. But I feel, as most people feel here, that it is a negative impact on our community and our children. So I'd like to stand up for our league, our kids, the township kids, and you are support. Thank you.
very brief because I think you could go all the time and you could all that I say anyway. It's been a very crazy holiday season and we started this whole lot six weeks ago. Who would have thought that in that short period of time, Washington State, Oregon, California, Montana, and Colorado have all had marijuana facilities ready. They have had cultivation as well as dispensaries. I think that the way everything is being Governor Christie had thought about six months ago that someone like that would be less likely to happen here. He never would have thought, as the rest of the nation, that the Obama administration would have changed that. And the environment certainly has changed with these facilities. But this is not something that we need in our township. This is not something that we need in New Jersey. The state of Arizona, which already has a strict medical marijuana law, Governor Jan Brewer currently is looking just at that, at the legality of the legal protections for her state workers in dealing with these facilities. There have been two things, really, that have been perfectly crystal clear through this whole time, however. And the first one is that the will of the taxpayers of this township, they have overwhelmingly come out in opposition to this facility. More so than they voted in the recent primaries or voted in general elections. The university, whether they were for medical marijuana or against medical marijuana, have come out with legitimate, well-informed, and conscientious concerns against it. As has been shown in our petition, which has come to committees for over 900 people, a lot of which, don't make the mistake of the people who are here tonight, there's a very difficult holiday season with Christmas parties for large developments over a course season, the Allentown High School Christmas concert. So many of those supporters could not be here tonight to witness it. This is why we're videotaping it and posting it on YouTube, so that they who really wanted to be here tonight but had other family obligations, family in this township comes first. Secondly, the thing that's been crystal clear, and I'm very appreciative of, is the support of the township committee. From day one, you guys have been firm, you've been open-minded, you've been conscientious, you've heard the concerns in open forums publicly, and you've come up with, I think, an outstanding piece of legislation that I hope passes unanimously. Thank you. I, like many of the folks in the room, have security as my main concern for the project. You know, I don't need to belabor the point on that. With regard to the aesthetics of the place, I don't really fan greenhouses, but we do have other greenhouses in town that I don't know if they're local to you. I don't think they're going to help them take you back to supply. So, you know, I don't know what to say about that, really. It does benefit in some of the other things that we have in town. I will say that I am concerned about the ordinance. I think that, you know, there are certainly other businesses that are going against federal law, if you will. You might be able to get a fan of ordinance here. I don't think you can enforce the ordinance on one particular business without enforcing it on others. I'm certainly concerned about implications of lawsuits, whether it's threats or not. It certainly could cost us quite a bit. I don't really know what the answer is. You know, there's some negotiation that could take place later in the morning and stuff like that. I don't know. But it could certainly be costly in the end. You know, we're concerned about stuff. People have raised concerns about COA fees and, you know, how much the COA cost us. You know, we're trying to get, you know, 6,000 bucks for a trail. We're told we don't have enough money for that. You know, I think there are things that maybe some other ways around it before we take those types of steps. So I hope you just, you know, I'm sure you're going to pass it. But I'm worried about what the implications are going to be on the taxpayers.
Good evening, Michael Kornick, uh, 153, 526, and at the Freehold. Uh, I'm representing one of the families, uh, as Dr. Burns mentioned, uh, that has other uh, Christmas family activities pressing, and so this is probably one of the few times when I'm actually authorized to speak on behalf of my wife, but she wanted to make sure that we were represented here, and so I'm here, as we were here several weeks ago, and uh, it, it doesn't seem like much has changed on this side of the fence here. We, we still have a community which is galvanized, which is, is very united, which is overwhelmingly opposed to this facility. And there is nothing that has been suggested that it can change that position at this point. This clearly does not belong in our town. And, and there's just no way around that. Uh, what I have noticed and what I'm deeply offended by are what I consider to be threats by break the word to initiate some type of litigation here uh, to force their way into the town. I, I did not hear that they did that in other places. I'm not sure why we are uh, the chosen ones for that type of, of action. Uh, clearly, it, it seems to me that they're suggesting that you, know, you do what we want you to do or we're going to, to break you financially because this is going to cost a ton of money to fight something like this. And I think that really, uh, demonstrates that they're not as concerned perhaps as they would like us to believe about those who are suffering and who may need this medication for whatever medical reason. We all have sympathy for those people and we all pray for them and, and wish that, that their suffering might be alleviated. We're just saying that this is not the place to do this. And we don't appreciate being threatened, being pushed around. Uh, I'm an attorney and to the extent that I can volunteer my services to the town, to, to do it. Uh, to, uh, to, 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 to fall on me because this is important to our families, to our children, to our future. Thank you.
there has uh, been a lot of information to digest on this issue, and I want to commend all of you uh, for researching, reviewing, and understanding the issues that really faces up in Freedom Township. And what surprises me, and I might be a little longer than my colleagues up here, um, but what surprises me is actually how many people that you would think would know about this, who have actually voted on these type of laws and supported these issues, uh, they really don't know about what's going on. Um, Mr. Fisher asks this committee to hold this ordinance. Well, then would he pull his applications? I didn't hear that. Breakwater is in Ocean Township. That's their address. That's actually a very nice community in Monmouth County. It's farming aspects to it as well. Uh, I don't see them going there. I do know their then assemblyman at the time both voted no, much like our assemblyman voted no for the act uh, when it was before the assembly back in January of 2010. So I'm not so sure that they would get support in Ocean Township either. Uh, I will tell you that where Upper Freeville will be getting support uh, in our position, in our residence position, is from the county. Uh, on their next meeting, they will be passing an ordinance supporting our opposition uh, to this. They also will be passing an opposition, a motion to, or excuse me, a resolution opposing what SADC's opinion was. And I just want to make sure one thing's clear on SADC. SADC is not, by any means, the law, law of the land. They are an advisory committee in the Department of Agriculture. They are a separate committee to which has, manages a farmland preservation program. Uh, they did, and as Mr. Se uh, Fisher uh, aptly said, they did deem marijuana a crop. Interestingly enough, to this day, this committee has not seen a citation of law or anything else relative to SADCs or when our council advised us on our December 1st meeting with the Department of Agriculture for the position that marijuana is a crop in the state of New Jersey. So until we get some citations, and, and, and believe me when I tell you, there are enough regulations enumerating what a crop is, especially those regulations, federal regulations, that are cited in the New Jersey Right to Farm Act. They enumerate exactly what a crop is, and marijuana is not one of them. I want to make sure everybody is clear what this ordinance uh, is doing. It is not enforcing federal law. We are not asking our state police, and we don't have our own police, to go out and arrest people who are in violation of federal law. What we are doing as a township committee is making a criteria for an applicant, any applicant, be it Breakwater or anybody else, before the zoning official, construction official, other applicable township employees, zoning board, and adjustment board, health and planning board, that they need to be compliant with federal law or their application will be deemed non-compliant. So as far as the force enforcing federal law uh, or zoning, this is not a zoning issue uh, for those who have mentioned zoning. Um, this is merely a, another criteria for applications uh, in Upper Freedom Township. Uh, but it is one that we had to take uh, because of the overwhelming sentiment of our town that they did not want uh, the marijuana compound in Upper Freehold. We met with Breakwater, so I hope this community doesn't think that we didn't meet with them. We did not have the privilege like Millstone, excuse me, like Plumstead did, like Chesterfield did. Uh, we didn't have the, um, the opportunity, uh, although it, it was there briefly, but we were only able to meet with them prior to them submitting their applications. Uh, their first one, much less their, their next four, but we did meet with them. And I, I want to make sure that the communication that we had with them, that this town understands, we were asked, couldn't you just throw up your hands and say, hey, it's out of our hands, it's state law, there's nothing we can do. 
That's what was asked, and the mayor will correct me if I'm wrong, she was sitting right next to me. And my response was, do you think our residents are that stupid? Do you think that they think that little of this committee? At that meeting, I extended my hand to Mr. Zaliski, the father, Alexander, and I said to him, and I mean this today, despite the threats of litigation, that I will help them find a way, because I don't think it's all brick water. I think the, the state regulations um, are, are confusing at best. I think they leave this at the, the town, the, at the feet of small towns like Upper Freehold. This stuff that it's a crop and it's a farming activity, it, give me a break. It, it really isn't. Uh, I don't know anybody that needs our guards at their farm, um, at least the ones that I do. Uh, but, but it does require community input. We've given community input. Um, and quite frankly, the offer still stands in light of the threat of litigation that I think there's a better way of doing this, not only for breakwater, but the other five licensees that the Department of Human Services granted. Uh, this is, um, some are right, they probably will re meet resistance in other towns, but there's some, I'm sure, that they won't even know it's even there. Uh, warehouses, a couple of people mentioned industrial areas, we don't have industrial areas, our industry is far. Um, that it would go unnoticed, the unmarked trucks that they mentioned at the November 22nd meeting, uh, up at exit 8A on the turnpike, where trucks are going in and out of there every minute of the day. Uh, there's a police force there. Maybe the state could help those communities that have police force, increase police force, if in fact it becomes a problem uh, with these facilities, which looking at the other states, uh, it's, it, it seems like it's, it might be inevitable, regardless of the restrictions that are here uh, for these uh, particular uh, uh, licensees. So uh, with that, uh, I think a couple things that we should, uh, we should do tonight in light of this, but I will address it after uh, this ordinance is one um, that came to my attention, I thought we did, I know Stan and I spoke publicly about it. Uh, we did not pass a resolution supporting the school's drug testing policy, I think we should do that but after this. And also, I mentioned this to SADC, I mentioned this to the county, that we should consider a resolution uh, that if, the, uh, if there is a farmland preservation project uh, with a particular landowner, and it requires the taxpayers' money spent on Upper Field Township, that the landowner uh, should agree that it does, he will not or she will not rent, lease, or sell its rights in, uh, on the farm to an activity that would be uh, in violation of federal law. Uh, hearing all the, the, the taxpayers speaking today, knowing that there's a, another petition out with more signatures, um, I don't think that this would be, um, it still is a good use of money, but I think we need protection for our taxpayers to make sure that their money is being spent exactly for what they uh, believe uh, it was intended for. But we can address that uh, after this ordinance. Uh, at this time, uh, I am ready to vote. Mayor. Okay, uh, I just would like to thank everyone for coming out and uh, continuing to come out with regards to this matter. Um, I was asked to, uh, since Assemblyman Dancer had been here before, um, he also asked that I let everyone know that he is in a voting session today. He is unable to obviously be here this evening. Uh, at our last meeting, he did speak to the fact that he was uh, introducing and sponsoring Assembly Bill 4411 which gives municipalities the statutory authority to prohibit the allowances of activities that are already prohibited by federal law. And yes, that does sound funny, but that is just what I said. Um, additionally, uh, over the weekend after SAGC's uh, position statement, Assemblywoman Mary Pat Angelini has introduced a bill that prohibits the growing of marijuana on preserved land. Uh, in speaking with Assemblyman Dancer today and uh, voice now via Assemblywoman Angelini, each of them now are also sponsoring each other's act. Uh, that probably will not see any action since they're in what they call the lame duck session right now until January 10th, I believe, of next year. Um, Assemblyman Dancer assured me uh, that he has our back on this. 
Um, also, as Mayman Alexander mentioned, as Assemblyman Dancer is also the serving mayor of Plumstead Township, they have also uh, moved ahead uh, and introduced an ordinance similar to ours that they um, hope to adopt, or I'm sorry, introduce towards the end of this year. Um, we've spoken about the SADC meeting that we attended, and it is just that. Their position is just that, their position. They have no governing authority uh, in regards to that. Uh, they explained to us, there was two points that they emailed to us uh, towards the end of that afternoon. The first one being that, yes, marijuana can be grown on preserved farmland. Uh, the fourth point being that it contradicted, or to me it was contradictory, that it does not qualify under the Right to Farm Act. Um, I don't know, an oxymoron somewhere in the ballpark there just doesn't make sense to me. Um, it then goes on to create some other questions, which I'll address further down the line. We also then attended the Monmouth County Freeholder meeting, and uh, Freeholder Curley was very quick to move a resolution to also support um, of the Freehold Township and the ordinance that we were proposing. I, I can understand all of the compassion and, and the statements that were made here this evening. Um, the bottom line is, I as an official, as various officials that sit in the audience here, past officials, present officials, school board officials, etc., we take an oath. And that oath, when you're sworn into office, is to uphold state and federal law. It doesn't say, maybe, what if, what about? It says it's the law and we must uphold it. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Wiesner that spoke to the fact that there's laws that are often not upheld. I agree with you. I agree that there may be some of ver various levels of government who opt not to enforce our laws. In my mind, that doesn't make it right. It makes them wrong. And I do think a perfect example of that is Attorney General Holder and the immigration law. But that's just another matter for another time. My concern is, is that if we decide which laws we want to enforce versus the laws that we don't want to enforce, where are we going to be a month from now, months from now, a year from now? We talk about our children. What legacy, what world are we going to leave them if we start to deviate from our laws and don't make them apply as they are written and as our forefathers saw them to be written. This municipality of the Freehold Township did not create this situation. Rather, elected officials within the New Jersey State Government that lacked the ability to comprehend or simply chose to ignore the ramifications of not dealing with the many details that this law would need to understand before they put it into action. Um, I don't think the right solution is to push this to another town. It would work for us, but I don't think that's the right solution. What I think is the right solution is for those that are genuinely concerned with the compassionate care that could be afforded many that suffer from various diseases and not those that speak about compassionate care while looking to make money off of that opportunity. Now let me stop right there. I'm certainly not against business. But let's be honest, this is a business or money-making opportunity. So let's call it what it is and let's start dealing with the facts. And the fact of the matter is, we have a big 800-pound gorilla that nobody wants to tackle. And that's called the New Jersey State Government. If you want to fight the fight, take your fight to the state. They're the ones that licensed you. They're the ones that created this fiasco, and I would encourage Breakwater and the others that were licensed because to the best of my knowledge, uh, no one has been able to come up with a location to cultivate 
and then distribute. Take your argument to them, take your threats of lawsuits to them, fight your battle with them, and when you all get it worked out and you get the feds to buy in and say, they'll indemnify everyone involved in this project, or better yet, make marijuana a legal substance, then come see us and we'll be willing to sit down and address the security, the lighting, the proximity that you will be to our schools, the smell, the transportation, and all of the many aspects that all of our residents have come to you and spoken about. I heard a couple comments tonight, and I do think it's important to address them. I do think that there's a lot of rumors that are going around. That's why I encourage us to all engage and know the facts and speak the facts. I will jump on to what Stan said with regards to the state police, and I believe the people's point in saying that it takes often a long extended period of time for them to get to us was simply to say, we don't have our own police department. We're a rural community. We share a police department that services many towns within the state of New Jersey. Interestingly enough, I read in the paper that Governor Christie has just ordered additional New Jersey State Troopers to assist Camden since their particular police department is having difficulties there handling their community's affairs due to um, financial issues. So I think that that's more of the point that people were making when they spoke about the fact that it does take a while for state police to get to us. The other comment that I really didn't understand is there's some other ways around this. Really? What are they? Because this is probably the fourth meeting that we've had with regards to this amongst various conversations that have been had amongst various <coughs> residents. And my phone is rang. I've been called, I've been emailed, I've been texted, et cetera, et cetera. I haven't heard one good suggestion other than, well, maybe we can sit down and talk about this. What are we going to talk about? It is against federal law. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Black and white, it's against the law. Talk about sending our children a message. No means no. One procedural thing that actually Stan pointed out was um, in council. We didn't, I don't think it's anything harmful, but we didn't actually move uh, the ordinance uh, and then discussion. We just went right into discussion. So I'd like to move the ordinance um, at this point, if that's okay, and if we have to debate it again, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, but just as a procedural aspect, we all discussed it without making the actual motion in second. So I, I move now. Uh, I'll second it. Anybody else? Anything else? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just Lily and Bernie called today. Lily and Bernie called today. And for those residents that were at uh, the county meeting that some of us attended, uh, in all the public sessions, the comments were made. Uh, Lily uh, said that she would like to attend the meeting and make comments. Unfortunately, uh, she cannot. But she told me, she gave me three sentences to quote her. Uh, this is not farming, this is not a crop, and not an upper field township. Eric, I'm just going to ask you if there's any additional comments 
that need to be made with regards to this at this time or if we can continue on with other business. Okay, that will uh, cause us to move on and the next is